Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Boo Master Series. Today we have a really awesome guest with us today. Uh, her name is Amber Spiegel. She is the owner of Sweet Ams and um, she's got She's got a really fun past and a really uh, very very talented. I really really love the the cleanness of her work. She just is, you know. Just I think I think that's one thing that sets you apart from everybody else. Amber is the, you know, the the exactness and preciseness that you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. And and welcome. Thank you for for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, we'll start off um, and talk a little bit about you, and uh, hopefully get everybody to know who you are and and what you're all about. Okay. So, so yeah. Um, you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you've you know done uh, through through your past, how you got into cake decorating. Yeah. Okay. So um, I grew up in Kingston, New York, which is about ninety miles north of New York City. Um, Basically, everybody in my family is either a business owner or an artist, so I knew pretty early on that I would somehow follow in their footsteps. Um, I took a few detours along the way. So um, after high school, I went to Ithaca College, and I got my bachelor's degree in business administration. And... When I was in my junior year, I had decided that I wanted to bake professionally. So I started baking for all of my roommates and became completely obsessed with food and trying out recipes. Um, so then after graduation, I applied to the Culinary Institute of America, which is in Hyde Park, New York. And that's about, it's only a 40 minute drive from where I'm from, so that was very convenient. Uh, before you can go to school there, you when I was going, they would require that you have six months of experience working in a professional food environment. So mm -hmm. before I enrolled, I worked at a local bakery for free until I completed that requirement. And then I got into the school and I spent uh, 21 months there. It's, I got my associate's degree in baking and pastry arts and I graduated in October of 2007. So right mm -hmm. after that I worked at another small bakery in my area and um, then I moved to Atlanta for a while just for something new and I didn't I was working at a wholesale bakery and it was it was really good experience, but I wasn't feeling very challenged. So then I moved mm -hmm. back up to New York, and I that's when I actually started making cookies. So right after I started doing that for fun, my mom actually told me about Etsy, which is an online marketplace for handmade goods. So she suggested that I open up a shop, and I did, and that went well. That's really so then, I, that's a great way to get started if you're just doing oh, yeah, you know, it's great. smaller things. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, so I did that for a while and then I uh, about a year before that I had um, entered into a Wilton cake decorating contest. And then it was around this time that I found out that I had won the grand prize. And the grand cool. prize was a trip to go out to the headquarters. Um, which is outside of Chicago, to, to take their master course, which is a two-week course. So I mm -hmm. went out there, and um, while I was there, I had the opportunity to give my resume to the decorating room supervisor. And the decorating room is the place where they make all of their cakes and their cookies for product packaging and for their publications, like the yearbook. A cool room. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's awesome. so much fun. It's really, yeah, it's, if you ever have a chance to visit, yeah, it's a really great space to visit. They give, um, if you take the class, they give tours of the decorating room. So if you ever have a chance, it's a really fun place. So then um, some time passed, and I moved out to Chicago because I had some friends and family there, and I um, was continuing with my Etsy shop. 
And then about six months after that, I was hired in the decorating room. And I worked there for about a year and a half. And then I sort of got restless and decided I wanted to work for myself. And I, so I came back to New York and um, I lived with my parents for about another year while I got things going. And then I started Sweet Amps, so. Awesome. So Sweet Amps <laughs> is an actual physical shop though, right? It's yeah, I have a little bakery. It's really, it's very tiny, but it's just it's perfect for what I'm doing here. So, awesome. and I should mention that before I started, I actually opened the business. Um, I took a class from Mimi Fix and you actually mm -hmm. had Mimi on a few weeks I ago. Did. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I took her class um, about starting and running a home-based food business and I didn't go the route of starting a home-based business, but it, the class was really, really helpful. And, oh, that's good. You know, so I could get all the information on how to do this. That's great. She has a yeah. lot of really good information, so I'm yeah. sure they give you a really good start into things. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. And so you're you're there in New York again, mm -hmm. right? In, yeah. It, in Kingston? So. Kingston, yeah. Okay. And your shop is there in Kingston. So if anyone's close by, you should go and check her out. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. Well, we have a really cool um, training today for you guys. Uh, Amber's going to teach us how to make a cute little cookie box. These things are just adorable. So I'm going to show Thanks. you guys. Here it is. And you can see, looking at this picture, how clean her work is. You know, all that brushed embroidery, every brush stroke, every everything is so precise and perfect. I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I will just let you, Amber, go ahead and uh, walk us through this this cool tutorial training thing. And okay. We'll go from there. It, oh, if you guys have any questions, make sure that you guys go down uh, below this uh, video there's a box down below that says ask a question make sure you type in all of your questions for Amber and we will get as many of them answered after the training as possible so okay go ahead all right so I'll just start out by talking about my cookie recipe first um, the cookie recipe that I use is made with um, orange zest vanilla bean and cardamom and the recipe is available on my website. Um, it's a download for $1.99. But uh, you can use your favorite sugar cookie recipe for this box. Um, so, yeah. yeah so, so some, oh, some sugar cookies have a tendency to expand when they're cooked. Do, does oh, yours, yeah. does um, yours do I that? I developed mine so that it doesn't spread too much in the oven, but I made it so that it stays a little bit soft um, because I prefer my cookies to be a little soft, not too, too crunchy. So mm -hmm. I kind of worked with it for a few years before I got this recipe. Well, that sounds um, like a great recipe because you either, it seems like you either have to have um, two, a, a really hard, crunchy cookie in order to get it to the shape you want, or else you're going to have a, you know, a uh, misshaped yeah. cookie that's, yeah. that's going to taste good. So right. yeah, both of them in the same mm -hmm. place is, is quite the feat. So yeah. that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and the other thing about um, cookies keeping their shape is that you have to keep your dough cold at all times. Um, so when I make my dough, I'll mix it and then refrigerate it for at least an hour. Mm -hmm. And then I will roll it out to about uh, just a little bit less than a quarter inch thick. And then I will chill the sheets for another 30 minutes before I cut the cookies. And then once the cookies are cut out, I'll freeze them for 15 minutes or so. Before you bake um, them? Yeah. And at that okay. point, you can actually freeze the cookies for you know a couple of months or so until you're ready to bake them which can save you tons of time if you have a big order. You can make your dough ahead of time, cut your cookies out, freeze them raw, and then when it's time to decorate, you just pop them in the oven and you're ready to go. 
You know, Lisa, so, I'm just thinking about, you know, Mother's Day coming up. Wouldn't this be a really fun thing to make for, oh, you know, yeah, that's what I was selling to your clients for too. Mother's Day or giving yeah. to, you mm -hmm. know, that's really yeah. fun. It's a perfect <laughs> time to do this. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. All right. So um, for this box, um, I mentioned how I roll my sheets out and then I chill them. But when I'm doing squares or rectangles, I'll freeze the sheet when it's rolled out because instead of cutting these out with a cookie cutter, I cut them with a T-square ruler, which means that it takes a little bit more time. So you want the dough to be really cold so that it stays cold longer. So frozen cookie sheets. Um, you're going to need six pieces for this box, two squares that are three by three inches, and then four rectangles that are three by four inches for the sides. Okay, perfect. And then this is. And then bake the cookies according to the instructions. And the other thing about this recipe on my website is that it contains agave nectar. So um, the cookies are going to brown a little bit faster than a recipe that doesn't contain agave. So um, just keep an eye on it. I only bake these for maybe 10 minutes, rotate them once halfway through, but they do bake or brown quickly. Okay. Is there a reason for the agave or just more health conscious or? Um, that's what I use in order to keep a little bit of the moisture in the cookie. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. All right. Okay. So here's. All right. So then um, after your cookies are baked and cooled, you can ice them. So I use flood consistency royal icing which basically is just you thin down your royal icing so that it's thin enough to, um, not so thin that it runs off the edge of the cookie, but uh, thick enough to, you know, hold its shape but also smooth out. So the way that you can test this is if you take a spoonful of your icing and drop it back into the bowl, it should take about 14 to 16 seconds for it to smooth itself out. Okay. Um, and there's a video about this on my website as well. I have um, video tutorials available for $1.99 each. And so the flood video has all this information in it. Perfect. That's and, a great deal for, you know, video yeah, tutorials. little video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so then um, after I flood my cookies, I let them dry overnight to make sure that they're very dry. Um, so the next day, this is a very long process, <laughs> the next day, um, once they're completely dry, you can go ahead with your brush embroidery. Oh, let me just mention about this blue color. Um, I use the Garden Tone set from Wilton a lot for my, most of my colors, but uh -huh. you can, um, if you don't have that, you can take a royal blue and add a little bit of black to it, to sort of mute it. And you can actually do that with your pinks and your greens and your purples, too. If you add a little black or brown, you can get these pretty garden tone colors. Okay. It's so not, not the neon bright, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So then, um, okay, then on to the brush embroidery. So for my brush embroidered flowers, I like to use a stiff consistency icing, which is basically just how the icing comes out when it's right off of the mixer. I don't add any more water to it. Um, it's spreadable and it holds a peak. It's almost like the consistency of toothpaste. Okay. So it's not too hard on your hand. It's, it's you know, relatively thin, but not very thin. So, um, yeah, and then you just want to take a round tip number two for this technique and doing one petal at a time, you just pipe the outline of the petal using a zigzag motion because mm -hmm. then you'll get that pretty little ruffled edge to it. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason you want to do one petal at a time is because you have to brush it before the icing dries. So pipe your petal and then you can take a um, square tip brush and Dip your brush in a little bit of water and blot it on a paper towel and then just bring the icing inward to get that um, brush embroidered effect. Perfect. Um, and this, this color is actually 
brown, like a little bit of brown mixed with green. So the reason I do that is because for some reason I find that when I just use brown by itself, it comes out a little bit pink. So I like to mm. add brown to it, or green, to neutralize that. So this is more of like an ivory type of color? Is that yeah, it? yeah, a little bit sort of ivory. Mm -hmm. That's actually how I get my ivory color too. Brown, oh, really? Brown and green. Yeah. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> okay, so here's what I was saying before is you just dip that um, brush into the water and you just want to make sure that you don't have too much water on your brush or else it will pool on the cookie and that's not a good situation. So, yeah, you just gently bring the icing in toward the center and there's actually um, a video on this process available on my website as well. Oh, cool. Um, so I usually do a five petal flower and then I can I go in immediately and do the next three petals. I don't wait for it to dry, I just go right ahead and do it. And do then you, the, oh sorry, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Do you use a template or anything like that or do you just kinda No, I do it freehand, yeah. but um you can use a template. Actually in the video there is a demonstration of how you can use a template. Um oh, cool. I just cut out a little flower shape on a piece of cardstock and I place it over the icing and trace it with um, a scribe tool, mm -hmm. which is just basically a needle tool with a plastic handle. And I use that tool for everything. Um, so you can use that to trace it and sort of scratch the design into the icing and then pipe over it. Cool. Okay. And I love the center of this, how you did the little swirl. Oh, yeah, so that's basically just a, um, piping two interlocking C shapes. So I love that. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. It makes a good effect, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then with the leaves, um, it's very similar, except that I don't use the, um, the ruffled or zigzag motion to pipe it. I just do, like, an outline and then take the brush and bring the icing in and then you can add the leaf vein in the middle um, mm -hmm. and I also like to add some dots around the cookie just to you know add a little bit of decoration in there and fill some space uh -huh. I love that you know it's it's really cool to see the difference between I think in the next picture we have all of them lined up. Oh yeah. The difference between the petals and the leaves, you know, it's yeah. It's not a really big difference, but it's different enough that you can mm -hmm. see like the roughly look of the petals and the a little bit more smooth lines on the on right. The leaves. Yeah. Yep. And I love the little dots. Those are cute. Oh thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here you okay, have them so, all yeah, lined up. Okay, so yeah, these are the um, six pieces that you'll need for the box. For the bottom, I just left it plain because you're not going to see it. Um, but I iced it just to give a little bit more weight on the bottom. Oh, just smart. To, yeah. <laughs> so those are your pieces. And then um, after you do your flowers, you would you should let your icing dry for about four to six hours after that because you're going to have to lay some of your pieces upside down while you're building your box so you just want to make sure that those are very dry so that they're not getting squished when you're mm -hmm. handling them. Um, yeah. I usually dry my cookies in front of a fan which helps a lot especially with the flood icing because it'll give you a nice um, almost like a shiny very smooth finish if you use a fan to dry your cookies so it's very helpful especially in the summer. All right. Okay, and then here we are. We're going to start putting it together now. Yeah. So um, you're just going to want to take one of your the sides of the box, one of the rectangles, and apply a little bit of icing to the bottom edge. And I just used the same icing um, as I did for the brush embroidery so because it's convenient. So just squeeze a little bit of icing out, and then you're going to... Um, just attach that piece to the bottom piece of the box. So that one will just attach right on there. Yep, just like that. So you want to put a little bit of pressure on it to make sure it's really stuck. And then at this point, you can either um, take something to prop it up or keep your hand there and with your other hand, 
just use, um, you know, keep one hand here and the other hand to use for the next step. Okay. If you're if you're talented enough, skilled enough to do. Yeah, it is very difficult to <laughs> have. Hand piping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's easier just to have something propping it up. Um, so then you just take your icing and um, apply a little bit to the next side of your box and press that and notice how it's upside down lying on the on the background there. So you want to that's why you want to make sure it's really dry so it's not crushing it. Okay. So yeah. then you just um, want to lift that up and press it against the other side of the bottom. And Okay, so this part, you have to hold these two sides and with your other hand, or using something to prop it, squeeze icing in between those the corner, like where they um, meet up. Mm -hmm. um, and then I like to take a, my square tip brush and sort of just spread the icing around and make sure that it's really stuck in there because um, after you apply the third side, you won't be able to reach in there again to apply more icing to the other side. So this is basically like your anchor joint. So you want to make sure it's really stuck. All right. This is the, the foundation piece. Kind yeah. Of, kind of a basically, deal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our cornerstone. <laughs> yes. Okay. So just make sure that's nice and, and glued together. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then for the third side, you want to put icing on the bottom and then like the side edge of that and then just flip it up and hold it on there. And then just hold on to them for about 30 seconds so that you can make sure that they're really stuck together and put some pressure on it. Not too much pressure because you don't want anything to break, but mm -hmm. just hold it and make sure it's really stuck. And then once you have your third side on, um, it'll basically stand up on its own. So you can sort of just relax a little bit and use both hands for the next step. So All then right. just um, for the last side, just put icing on three edges of the cookie and lift it up and just squeeze it on there and hold it for 30 seconds to make sure it's really stuck on there. Okay. So then once all four sides are on the box, um, you should let it dry for about an hour to make sure that it's really going to hold together before you start handling it again. So that's what it looks like when you've got okay. all your pieces together. Look at how cute that is. And, <laughs> you know, I, this, is where, this is where a good recipe comes in play. Because yeah. if you don't have them the exact size, if you don't have them, you know, exact thickness and everything right. they're just they're not gonna line up as well as yeah be right here so yeah yeah okay all right so once it's um, had some time to dry you just want to um, apply some icing to the outside of each corner just for a little bit more stability um, and I this is the same icing as they use for the brush embroidery again because I it's just on hand, so. Um, and then you don't have to wait for this to dry. You can just move on to the next step, which is adding um, a border to the each corner. So here I'm using stiff consistency icing again, just in white this time, instead of that beige color. Mm -hmm. And this is a tip five, which is, I usually work with small tips, like ones and twos and threes, but for this one, I just wanted the border to cover the um, any like gaps that were there, or just you know, messy icing that was showing. So I just wanted a nice large border. Um, and there's actually a video available in my shop for piping a bead border. Um, it's relatively simple. So this is just a nice little addition to you know cover up any imperfections. Bead border is something I use a lot. Yeah, bead, bead borders are nice, they're fast, they're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're perfect. <laughs> yep, so then um, now the box is pretty much ready. Um, you should let your border dry for a little bit too before you, you know, handle it too much. Mm -hmm. But at this point, the box is pretty sturdy. Okay. So you can fill it with whatever you want. I filled mine with some mini 
cookies and some roses, little royal icing roses I had in there. Oh, yeah, there. And look how adorable. So, yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Wouldn't that? I, seriously, that would make the perfect Mother's Day present. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I would like getting a, right. a little box of cookies yeah. made out of a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be so fun. <laughs> I love it. And, and look at those flowers. Did you did you hand paint those flowers on the I did, one? yeah. Mm -hmm. that is with really a little bit of um, just some pearl dust mixed with uh, alcohol. And then I made a little paint and just painted those on there. That is so pretty. I love Thank that. You. And then your little, are those little drop flowers out of real icing? Um, they're actually, um, I did them with a flower nail and a rose oh, okay. petal so tip. A little mini. They're <laughs> tiny, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a 101 kind of a thing? That one, actually, um, it was a tip 59S, which is like teeny tiny, and it's got a little curve to it. It's very small. <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. So, oh, and there's one more shot of it right there. Oh, yeah. It on it. <laughs> so cute. I love it. Thank and I you. love those colors. Oh, they're so cute. I, yeah, I always use those colors. I can't seem to move away from them. You know what? I have my colors too. Yeah. But I just, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now for our question and answer. Um, we have a bunch of questions that have come in so far. If you guys are still wanting to ask questions from Amber and haven't figured it out yet, down below is a box that says ask a question. So you can go ahead and type it in there and um, we will get to as many of the questions as we can. Okay. I'm sorry, my screen is kind of far away from me. Let me pull this closer <laughs> so I can read it. Sorry, guys. Okay. All right, here's our first question. It is from Janie. Uh, she says, I have attempted to make royal icing two different times with two different recipes that failed. Now I have no confidence to try again. Is there a secret to making this icing? Upon watching several videos, it appears as though if you wish to change the consistency, you just add water or add powdered sugar. Is this correct, or is this just going to take a lot of practice? Well, first of all, don't give up. Keep trying. <laughs> never give up. Um, Come on. <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, it takes lots of practice to get it right. Um, I'm, you know, you'll find the recipe that works for you. Not every recipe works for everybody, depending on where you live, because of the climate can make you know weird things happen to your icing so um, about changing the consistency it's correct that you just add a little bit of water to thin it down but in order to thicken it up I don't recommend just adding powdered sugar because you'll um, mess up the ratio of sugar to meringue powder mm -hmm. so what I do is I have um, extra stiff icing on hand which you know just icing that ki comes right off of the mixer and if I add too much water I just add more stiff icing to thicken it up but you know if you do that you'll never get back to the stiffest consistency but if you're doing flood icing and you thin it too much you can add a little bit of stiff icing to thicken it back up yeah very good yeah um, one thing that I have uh, learned is that you know you don't you don't want to start adding more powdered sugar like you said mm -hmm. and another good reason why is because then you're going to get some of that graininess from the powdered sugar oh, and it's yeah. going to clog up your tube yes. you don't want it's, that. yeah it's <laughs> not good yeah yeah okay we have Vicky asks uh, will all your future custom cookies be sold on your website as opposed to Etsy yeah, I'm actually moving the whole operation over to my own website. Um, at the moment, I'm not taking custom orders, but uh, every once in a while I have what I'm calling cookie specials. So you can go on to the website and see what's available. Right now I have um, my Mother's Day set available, which is um, a set of six cookies. It's a pretty blue and white design. So that's what's there now. Um, I, in the future, I... I might take custom orders again, but I'm trying more to focus on teaching classes. So, yeah. 
All right. Okay, we have someone that asks um, about the consistencies again of the, the frosting for, you know, the whole, can you go through the different consistencies that you, that you use? Um, yeah, so basically I just use the stiff consistency icing, which is the icing, how it is when it comes off of the mixer. That's what I refer to as stiff consistency. And then I have flood consistency, which is my 14 to 16 count icing. That's what I use for um, just the base layer of icing on all of the cookies. Um, and then in between there, I don't really use like a medium, sometimes I'll use a medium consistency for things like monograms or if I'm doing some very flowy designs that need, the icing needs to be thin enough to squeeze out nicely but not so thin that it spreads all over the place. So there is a medium consistency in there somewhere. But basically I always use either stiff or flood consistency. Okay, good to know. <laughs> All right, uh, we have Denise uh, asks, can you use buttercream for embroidery or only royal icing? You can use buttercream. Um, I have heard of, I've never tried this myself, but I've heard of people doing the brush embroidery actually on a buttercream cake, which I think you'd have to be really careful with that, but um, it is possible. But really you can do um, brush embroidery on a fondant covered cake using buttercream. Um, which is something I've done, but I haven't done it on buttercream itself, but I have heard that it is possible. Great. Okay, uh, we have Robin asks, is it possible to self-teach decorating skills such as yours? Yeah, I mean, I in school I had a three-week class out of a 21-month program of just cake decorating, so it was really just general things and um, and then I took the Wilton class, which was, you know, only two weeks long. So it wasn't like I've been professionally trained in just this for years and years. A lot of it was just me experimenting on my own, reading books about it. Just a lot of just practice by myself. So, yeah, you can mm -hmm. definitely teach yourself. Well, you know, in a way, a lot of us are, most of us are, purely self-taught yeah you know, unless you have gone to uh, you know uh, there there are a few schools here that teach purely cake decorating mm -hmm. but you know uh, things things like YouTube things like cake food mm -hmm. things like you yeah know, your your tutorials that you sell yeah these are the things that really are what's going to teach you um, mm -hmm. going to going to uh, things like the cake camp that's coming up here in Las Vegas in a few months or ICs that's out in Virginia I believe yeah. it's Virginia right <laughs> I don't know anyway, I think it's in Virginia um, but yeah the, these are the things that we as cake decorators do to train ourselves um, so you have all of these different things at your disposal but does that really make you self-taught or does that make you you know, trained professionally. You know, it's it's really yeah. hard to say whether you've been trained professionally or trained, you know, right. self-taught. Unless you're purely, you know, reading a book and and, and doing, yeah. which you know, that's <laughs> yeah. that's a lot of how I ch that I learned. You know, I learned a lot of my cake decorating skills before I even took the basic Wilton classes. Mm -hmm. you know, so I mean, there's it's possible. So it's yeah. just Wherever you can find the information, it's great. It's right. basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. Um, a lot of people are having problems with the video. Hopefully, um, well, they, they will have it available as a replay. Yeah. So hopefully you guys have been able to get on, though. Okay. Oh, John says, love your work. Big Aww. smile. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, just trying to scroll through these ones. Okay. Sorry about that. A lot of people saying you do beautiful work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and you do. It's it's really Thanks. spectacular work. Okay. Um, 
Looks like we have. I wonder if we've had an issue with. with our training. Sorry about this. That's okay. <laughs> Just to get through to some more questions. Um, okay. We have Terry. She said, or he or she, Terry is the, I don't know, <laughs> says, you use the side of the square brush when you pull, or do you use the... Yeah, that's correct. I should have mentioned that before. So, um, uh, I would like to demonstrate it, but my brush is so tiny, so you won't be able to see. Okay, I um, can actually click on, on you and make you larger if you want oh, to do okay. that. Oh, okay, yeah. Let me okay, get this little go. brush out so I can show you. And while you're doing that, we had another question. Someone asked, what tip do you use for the flowers and leaves? A tip two. Tip two. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so can you see this brush kind of? So if yep. you have a square tip brush, like I don't use it flat, I turn it on its side so I'm using just the edge of the brush. So that way you can get um, more, you know, it's it just gives you more definition than if you were to use it flat this way. So you just want to turn it and just use the, the very thin edge of the brush to do the brush embroidering. Perfect. And then while we're here, I just have this um, the scribe tool, which is what I was talking about before that I basically use for everything. It's just a needle with a handle, and it's just so like really helpful for everything. So that's All the right. scribe tool that I'm always talking okay. about on my blog. Okay, and so that's what you used to if you were not going to freehand and you wanted to actually use a. a to a pattern or a template, mm -hmm. you would just use that, put that up, and, and kind of scribe around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else that you would use that for in this situation? Um, I use it for flooding. I use it to, okay. if once you flood the cookie, um, you know, there's always going to be little spaces that you miss and it's uneven. So you can use the scribe tool to um, evenly distribute the icing and make it even all around the edges. Okay. Get out of any bubbles that might be in there. Yeah, air bubbles, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Um, we have Linda asks, what is the best icing to use? Um, well, I use royal icing basically for everything. Um, it really depends what you're doing. Um, like if I'm just making something, you know, for a birthday party, I'll just do a cake with buttercream, just a very simple... Um, Swiss meringue buttercream but I'm really royal icing is just so versatile you can use it for everything so I'm really royal icing is number one for me <laughs> perfect yeah you know there's different recipes for royal icing but yeah a good royal icing is a it's a good one for cookies yeah. especially yeah so uh, we have someone asks oh Debbie Beasley she asks, how many of these cookie boxes can you do in a day? Um, well, if I were to break it down into the steps, I could do, oh, maybe eight or ten, probably. Okay. It's not very many, because the brush embroidery takes a really long time. Well, and um, you have to think about the fact also that you're making six different cookies Per yeah, you know, per mm -hmm. cookie. So yeah, so basically, my um, I can do a dozen brush embroidered cookies in an hour. Or so, but you know, you have to factor in the time that you need to rest because you don't want your hand to become injured. So, yeah, yeah, just try to take it easy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, we have. Um, let's see. Carolyn asks, uh, sugar cookies seem to get stale quickly. How do you keep them fresh? Um, once my cookies are dry, the icing is completely dry, I wrap them up in cellophane bags um, and I heat seal them. So they stay fresh for about two weeks after I've shipped them out because the air is completely sealed out of the bag. So that's the okay. best way. I mean, if you don't have a heat sealer, you can... Um, tape them shut you just have to make sure that you've like folded down the bag so that no air 
can get inside. I wouldn't recommend really storing them in a container if they're not heat sealed because there's always, you know, air flowing through that. So you just mm -hmm. want to make sure that there's, you know, no air coming into the bag. Okay. So where do you, where do you find bags like this that you use? I get my bags from Nashville Wraps. Okay. Um, and then I just bought my heat sealer from Uline. It's just a little tabletop one, really simple. But Nashville Wraps has great bags, so. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll be equipped to make some cute cookies for Mother's yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have um, Syl from Montreal. She <laughs> asks um, two questions. So I guess I'll just ask them in in. Portions. Okay. Hey, given given that beautiful cookie designs can take a few days to complete fully, what do you recommend to do to let the icing dry but still conserve as much freshness as possible? Well, that's Another part question. of the reason that I added the agave into the cookie because when before when I wasn't using it, I would have to leave my cookies out for a day or two to you know with all the decoration that's going on, and they would mm -hmm. lose a lot of their moisture. So. Um, I added that in and it keeps it, uh, you know, like soft and tasting fresh. Um, but I've actually had some questions because some people prefer a crunchier cookie. So then the trick to that is just before you decorate them, just leave them out for a little bit longer than you normally would. So let some of that moisture, you know, um, evaporate into the air, however it works. But I added it in so that it would remain, you know, fresh tasting for longer okay great so if you if you start your flood work a little bit sooner before you let the cookie completely you know dry out mm -hmm. that that sugar or the royal icing is actually going to hold in some of that moisture yeah it sort of seals it up so you can keep it nice and soft for a little bit longer good okay and then her second question um also from the point a cookie is finished, what would you say is the shelf life? Um, after I wrap them up, it, I give it about two weeks. So I, okay. whenever I send out an order, I put a little note in my box that says, um, you know, the date that they'll be best eaten by. Mm -hmm. So it's usually two weeks. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see, someone asks, uh, what, what tip did you use to pipe the mini roses? Oh, the tiny ones? It was a uh -huh. 59S, and that, it was a Wilton tip. Yeah, that's, but, a, um, that's a little curved one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for I have a video on the site about making royal icing roses, and I use a tip, a petal tip 104, which mm -hmm. gives you, a, you know, it's easier to work with, um, but it still is, you know, pretty small, actually. So either one is a nice, nice tip to use. All right, perfect. Um, uh, oh, okay. Here's a question. Um, she said, I missed the first part of the interview. Was there anything in particular in your training while at Wilton that is a big part of your success now? Um, I would say there's, it's not one thing in particular, but just, um, being there in general, I absorbed a lot of information and learned a lot. Um, just overall, it really, um, it was just a really great experience. You know, there wasn't really anything that I could pinpoint. So it, it gave me experience in all kinds of different cake decorating things and photography even. Um, oh, so yeah, there was a lot of... Very cool. Yeah. You know, things like that, you, you do learn from things like that, but I think more than anything, you, you get confidence from it. Oh, you know? definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know that when I took my, um, you know, my, my first little Wilton classes, I thought I didn't know anything, you know, because I, everything that I knew, I was self-taught, you know, I had just right. read in a book and practiced. And so I thought, I, I just don't know anything, you know, so I need to go take this class. Well, I went and took the class and found out that I knew everything already, <laughs> you know, and so, I mean, because I had yeah. been reading through all the Wilton yearbooks, that's all I had you know, and all I had, you know, and so mm -hmm. I read through all the Wilton yearbooks that I could possibly get through, practiced yeah. everything 
everything that I possibly could. And I got there and took this class and realized, hey, I already know all this. Yeah. This is cool, you know? Right. So I think that if you're actually practicing and doing a lot of this stuff at home, you're going to find that, you know, you already know all this stuff. And, and it's just going to boost your confidence yeah. level more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, you do learn a lot too. And there's yeah. always those little tips. I, I think uh, that's another thing that I think those are the two most valuable things that you learn at things like this. There's little tips here and there that you learn that make things so much faster and so much oh, easier yeah, and definitely. so much like, oh, why didn't I do that before? You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. And Wilton is really good that way. I like Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay, um, Rebecca asks, she's from the UK, so mm -hmm. I'm assuming that when she says biscuit, she's referring to the cookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, when baking the biscuit, would you bake until golden brown along the edges or until firm to the touch? I like my cookies to be a little bit brown around the edges, um, so I would, I would let them get brown. Um, I find that they taste better that way. I like to have a little bit of that almost like a caramelization, you know, that happens during that process. So I really like that richness that it brings out if you let the cookies get brown on the edges. Okay, great. Okay, um, here's one that always stumps everybody. Yeah. <laughs> June from Pennsylvania asks, beautiful work. How do you go about pricing because of the time involved? Um, and also, she missed the beginning, so how large is the box? Oh, the box is um, four inches tall by three inches wide. Mm -hmm. um, and then pricing is, that's a big issue for everybody, I've noticed. It is. Especially, I see a lot in forums, like people are always, you know, what do I price for this? Because you go into a grocery store and it's, they charge five seventy five for a cookie that you know, maybe they didn't spend too much time on and you're having trouble getting $3 a cookie and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So mm -hmm. you really, if it depends on your market, really. If you can, I just, you just have to charge what you're worth. Like, you can't sell mm -hmm. yourself short. And if we all start raising our prices and charging what we're worth, it's going to really change things. So I really, you know, I would really like to see people start charging what their time is worth because we all know that hours and hours and hours go into these cookies and you know we just have to make it known that it's it's an art it's mm -hmm. not you know just bang out a million cookies in a week and that's it it's it takes a lot of work so it Absolutely. really depends on your you know who you're selling to but yeah so amen. I don't have a <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> amen. Everybody needs to, you know, make sure that you charge what you're worth. If you're not making the amount of money that you need, you know, per hour plus your product, you're you're undercutting yourself and everybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's make true, sure you're charging true, what you're yeah. worth. If someone's not willing to pay for that, then you know, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not worth it to to give away your work. If, right, you know, it, it's just not worth it. Mm -hmm. so, yes, amen. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it, I, if I could if I could say that every every training that we do, be firm on your prices, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Some more about uh, consistency, but you've covered that a couple of times. Let's see. Here's a good one. Uh, can you paint the flowers and leaves after they're dried with gold dust or other colors? Oh, um, yeah. Actually, if you go to my website, um, you can see that my background photo is brush embroidered flowers that are painted with gold. But the way that I do that is that I'll do my brush embroidered flowers in the same color as the base icing. Um, so then once you go over it with gold, you won't see any spots that you miss because it's going to be really hard to cover each little brush stroke with a coat of gold. So, yeah, that's a yeah. really good tip right there, you know, because if you, if you, you know, like you're making your cookie out of blue, you're, you know, brush embroidering with this white. And then you try to put gold on top of it, you're still going to see. Yeah. 
So yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Very smart. Okay. Um, well, someone says, oh, here's someone wanting to order your cookies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Vicky says, I've already ordered the Mother's Day cookies from your website. Are oh, you going to be selling you. graduation and or Father's Day cookies as well? Um, I will most likely be doing Father's Day cookies and graduation cookies is something that I would definitely take into consideration. It really depends on what's happening during the month. So, But yeah, thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> Awesome. Give you a good heads up. <laughs> People yeah. are wanting them. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, and that goes to show your recipe must be good, so worth going and, and getting that. I have to go over and get your recipe. <laughs> okay. I, that's one thing that I've struggled with, honestly, is oh, getting yeah. a good recipe that holds up and is firm but still tastes mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, someone says, I noticed that you didn't use couplers in your bag. Uh, could you right. tell me why you choose to do that? Um, I don't use couplers unless I'm going to be using, I have like, I have a lot of tips and um, so I don't really need to be switching tips a lot because I have a lot of the same one that I can fill all of my bags using the same tip. But if you only have three of a tip two and you have five bags of color, then you're probably going to want to use a coupler. But I really don't use them because I feel like they're kind of a hassle. Um, so I just leave them out just because I'm, I don't, you know, want to deal with it and they're hard mm -hmm. to clean and they're hard to get out of the bag when you're done. So I really don't <laughs> like them. And then if I need to, um, put a different tip on top of the tip that I'm using, instead of switching it, I'll just put it on and put a little scotch tape over it oh. to use a different tip. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> that is actually something I learned when I was working at Wilton. So one of those little tips yeah. that you pick up along the way. <laughs> that's that's actually really smart. I've never heard yeah. you do that before. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I think couplers can be useful, but they can also be, you know, not. Yeah. <laughs> so in cases like this, when you right. don't need to switch a tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. but if you're switching, they're great. Like if, when I'm doing roses, I don't have a lot of rose tips. So if I want to mm -hmm. do a two-tone rose, I'll use a coupler because you can just switch them back and forth and it's super easy. So couplers definitely have their place when decorating. So definitely. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We have a question. Is it okay to use egg whites instead of meringue to make the royal icing? Yeah. Um, actually, the first time that I made royal icing, I used egg whites. Um, the only reason I don't is because it's more convenient to use meringue powder and if you're making a lot of royal icing, it's just easier to use the meringue powder and also for food safety reasons, um, you don't have to worry about it as much if you're using dried egg white or meringue powder. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a recipe for royal icing with egg whites, but I know that there are plenty out there. So yeah, you can definitely use fresh egg white instead okay. of meringue powder. Yeah, just be careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, someone asks, I've got a lot of cookies to make uh, for a wedding that will be royal iced. Can I do these in advance and freeze them to keep them fresh? So I've never frozen decorated cookies before, but I have heard that this is something that works for some people. Um, I was saying before, like in order to save time for a large order, you can make your dough in advance and cut out your cookies and freeze the cookies raw and then bake them when it's time to decorate. So that saves me a ton of time. But as for freezing decorated cookies, I've never done it, so I can't um, say if it really works or not, but I have heard that it does. Okay. Okay. That's very nice. I, I like the idea of, you know, freezing them raw. And then mm -hmm. and then baking them makes them a little yeah. more fresh that way. Yeah, yeah. So, <sighs> oh, someone wants to know how you were hired by Wilton. <laughs> oh, so that was just oh, I don't know how. Just, just some things happen. really work out. <laughs> like I when I was there for the class, um, I had I brought my portfolio with me and. Um, Somehow I was asking questions about the decorating room when I was in the class and then 
the instructors were like, oh, well, you know, you can show your resume to the decorating room supervisor. So it's sort of just happened that way. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 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 Sometimes things work out. Yeah. It's just, you know, <laughs> in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions. People are, are now saying, I missed part of it. I think we had a technical issue. So sorry oh, okay. to all of you that did have a technical issue and are back. Um, for those of you that missed it, there will be a replay right after this is over. It will actually uh, be able to be rebroadcasted. So you can actually come back and watch it through. You can pause it, rewind it, you know, whatever you want. So it is available to watch afterwards. And you can just follow the same link. It'll it'll bring you right here and you can watch it again. And I'm sorry for any technical problems we did have. I don't know why that would have happened. But and and I'm glad you you're all back. <laughs> So, okay. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to end there. Oh, okay. um, you know, maybe we can take one more question. Let's see. Oh, here's a good one. And this will be our, our last question. Sabrina says, have you ever thought about making a book with patterns of your brushed embroidery flowers? Um, actually, yeah. I was thinking about, for a little, I actually have, um, I had a, video on my website for brush embroidered leaves and I was I included a PDF file of the template with that one um, but yeah I have actually thought about putting them all together in sort of a pattern book um, so that would be awesome. I think that would be really convenient very, so, yeah. very. <laughs> and you know ebooks are the way to go these days so yeah. <laughs> yeah. just put it on your website everyone can right. find it there yeah <laughs> perfect okay yes definitely online is, is definitely the, the best option especially yeah. for especially for you you know because then you don't have to try to find a publisher it, it costs all that extra money to get yeah. and all of that so mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. <laughs> yeah I just did an ebook <laughs> okay so here we go we have um, here's the big thing coming up for Amber um, if uh, do you have any classes or anything like that coming up also? That I don't have any classes scheduled now, but I'll be putting that up on the website as soon as I schedule the next one. And those are held in Kingston, New York. So okay. Okay. keep checking back if you're interested. All right. So um, if you're in the Kingston area or want to travel to the Kingston area to take some classes, uh, sweetams.com. You can mm -hmm. uh, you know keep in touch with, with Amber that way. And so, but this is the big news, is her, is the spring cookie decorating contest. So I'll let you just explain the contest and how it works. Okay, so um, if you go to my website, there's a tab called contest, and you can get all of this information there. Um, basically, it's, um, there are six or so decorating techniques that I've listed on the website, and you can choose from any of those. You can use one or more of the techniques to create an original cookie design that has a spring theme. Um, and then just submit your photo to me. You can submit up to three different cookie designs before or by April 30th. And then um, I'm going to have a really tough time choosing because I've already received some really beautiful cookies and I'm just like so impressed so I'm gonna have to enlist <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to get some guest judges because I'm not gonna oh, be yeah? able to do it myself awesome <laughs> nice. so yeah just um I guess we've got another two weeks or so so that's plenty of time to just create something pretty and send it to me Cool. And then all of the entries are, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you should, um, I, I didn't think about this until just now, but you should send me some of the finalists, and we'll put them up on on, on Cake Foo. And so, oh, that's a great idea. So we can okay, show yeah. everybody what everybody's doing. I okay, think really yeah, fun. that's a good idea. All right, yeah, okay. I'll do that. Okay, so okay, go ahead. Yeah. And then, um, so, yeah, I've, the final, or the entries are all on the website. You can find them there to see what's been going on so far. And the grand prize is a decorating kit, um, just filled with a bunch of my favorite stuff. You get a Sweet Am's apron, a scribe tool, and lots of other fun things. Um, a cookie cutter is in there, and it comes in a pretty little box to hold yes. it all. You did send me a picture of that, and I didn't get it up on the training. Let me see if oh. I can find it really fast. <laughs> okay. I don't know why I missed that. Okay. 
Let me see if I can find that. All right. And let's see. Sorry, it may take a second. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay, you want to talk about some of the cookies you've gotten so far or anything like that? Or? Um, just off the top of my head, I've gotten this really pretty, it looks like a, a vintage postcard um, actually done by somebody who took one of my classes, so that was really exciting to see that. That was really pretty. Um, some really pretty basket weave hats I've received. Um, some brush embroidered flowers. I'm just, I'm really impressed at how people, I mean, you know, they say that they watch the video and then they've created this brush embroidered cookie and I'm just so excited that they're, it's, they're turning out so well, so. Isn't it so fun to see that you are helping to, to bring, you know, talent and, and, and all of that to the industry. It's, I, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think it. it's the best, that's the best part about what's, what I'm doing now is mm -hmm. seeing how other people are using these techniques to create really pretty cookies. So it's really satisfying awesome. to see I, that. I found it. Let me pull it up okay. really fast. Let me find the screen really <laughs> fast. So there's two of me now. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is it. This is the yeah. So Lord. there's lots of fun things. Um, some brushes and pearl dust and spatulas and that's the apron that comes with it. So very cool. Uh, yeah, we can all stuff. use more aprons. We can all use more piping. Yeah. Bags. <laughs> we can all use the spatulas. Yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful. Yeah. Well, that looks like a so, fun, a fun little giveaway there. So, yeah. anybody that's that's interested, I mean, you're making cookies anyway, right? For, yeah, you know, right. Spring, Mother's Day, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, go ahead and send in your pictures to Amber and and enter the the contest. And so. it's open to everybody all over the world. So, I'll ship that prize pack to whoever. Awesome. Is the winner anywhere in the world? So. Okay, well. Perfect. Well, I wanted to thank you, Amber, for coming on and, and being here with us today and teaching us. Uh, this this was such a cute, cute thing. I love it. Thanks. Thank and you for having me. And your work is beautiful. Thank you yes. very much. <laughs> and, you know, I'm going to run over and get this recipe off of your website. Okay. I hope everyone else does, too. All right. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you so much, and we will see you guys all next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.